Wow, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored Peoples, also known as the NAACP, has issued a travel warning for the entire state of Florida, urging not only black people, but for some reason, the quote, LGBTQ plus community to stay far away from Florida because it's dangerous for them to be here. Um, the uh, state, according to the NAACP statement, is openly hostile towards black people. Now, this is news to me. It's pretty darn remarkable. Um, I was not under the, I was not under the, uh, um, the impression that we had anything going on in this state with our politics or our culture um, concerning black people in any negative way. So I was very interesting to, or interested to learn what the uh, what the NAACP was so worried about. You know, they said that there is a, quote, surging racism in the state of Florida. I thought, oh, my gosh, what is it? Are there <clears throat> are, is there a, a resurgence of the Klan? Um, are there men in white hoods riding around on horses, you know, setting churches on fire? <laughs> are there crosses burning uh, in the front yards of, uh, you know, poor people in the hood? What could possibly happen um, to, to urge the or to uh, prompt the NAACP to issue a travel warning for a U.S. state. I mean, I've never heard of them doing this in my lifetime. Maybe they did it back in the 50s or something like that. Maybe they said back then, you know, hey, blacks, stay out of the South, you know, <laughs> you know, great advice. You know, they were too poor to move. So I don't even think back then the NAACP would have done something like this. Um, if anyone knows of like a list of NAACP past travel warnings, I'd be interested to read them because and compare their reasoning in this one to ones that they may have had in the past. Because uh, uh, I don't, I wasn't quite prepared for the for the doozy. I only guessed one of the things on the list, but they've got a whole manifesto. Um, they've got quite a few bullet points on why the blacks need to stay out of Florida. So the first one that I will get to is the one that I guessed. Um, you can somewhat understand it. I mean, it doesn't, well, I shouldn't say that. None of this isn't, none of this really makes sense, but I could at least guess based on the, the quality of argumentation uh, on the modern left and what they consider to be a threat to their safety. Uh, I was able to guess that the NAACP was very upset about um, uh, Flor the whole Florida um, schools controversy with uh, the uh, AP African American Studies course. And I thought it was AP Black History, but the Zero Hedge article I read referred to it as AP African American Studies, so that's what we'll call it. And uh, the state of Florida mandated that the college board uh, remove critical race theory from the textbook, which seems pretty darn reasonable until the last couple of years. Nobody heard of critical race theory. This was not something that, um, you know, was a, a time-honored uh, bedrock uh, principle going back into the mists of history that we include critical race theory in our public school courses, particularly when you have a right-wing government. It doesn't make sense for that government to be um, funding schools teaching uh, left-wing values. When you have a state, which is a majority white people, um, even if they were a minority, this wouldn't be good either. You shouldn't really have school courses that teach that white people aren't inherently evil. I don't think you should teach that any group is inherently evil. I think that that uh, leads to dehumanization and um, the breakdown of social order. It leads to certain groups of people thinking that they don't have to respect the humanity or the rights um, of other groups of people. I think it leads to um, gangs of young black men um, assaulting uh, pregnant women and stealing their bicycles. I don't know why that example popped into my head. I mean, obviously that's never happened. Um, there certainly isn't any recent news stories about that, so I'm not sure not sure why I thought of a you know um, young black men uh, assaulting a you know pregnant white woman and and stealing her bicycle and then uh, you know claiming to be the victims themselves and that she actually stole their bicycle. But anyway, this is the only controversy that I've heard them ever try and dig up um, about, um, you know, the state of Florida, and by extension, Ron DeSantis and the blacks, as we like to call them. And it was a fairly recent thing. Now, this is still, even though this is the least ridiculous thing on the list, it's the only thing that is remotely connected to race and government policy, 
Um, it's hilarious to have them issue a travel warning, like as if what's being, you know, as, as if not teaching far left um, ideology in the public schools is a threat to the safety of a black tourist. But I wanted to give that as much credit as I could and as much of a fair hearing before I get to the because that if once I tell you the other points on the list, um, I'm total I would have totally um, poisoned the well and biased you against the NAACP's point. So I want to take their strongest point and go out and knock that one down first. Um, so now let's move on to their weaker points. Believe it or not, there are weaker points. The next one removing diversity, equity, and inclusion from certain public universities by which they're referring to the reforms at New College of Florida, a, uh, a state college which has a population um, uh, of students significant, like less, th like half the size of a high school. Uh, New College has like 600 some students, I think. There's almost nobody that goes there. Uh, there's approximately 0.1% of them uh, are black people, and uh, the reforms have more, I would think, have much more of an impact on the uh, um, on the tranny nonsense than anything. But I guess that's why um, the NAACP's warning and their travel advisory is uh, on behalf of not only black people, but the LGBTQ plus community. I didn't know that the NAACP was a part of Big Gay, um, but now I guess they are. I mean, you would think that maybe it would be some kind of gay group like the human rights campaign, you know, most ridiculous corporate front organization on the planet. But still, you would think they would be the ones issuing the travel warning on behalf of the LGBTQ plus community. So the first two bullet points are about schools. It has nothing to do with going to Disney World. You know, it's not like the NAACP is trying to, uh, you know, back up Bob Iger or anything like that. No, no, no. So to lay out the NAACP allegations so far, um, it's rooted entirely in Florida's policies against critical race theory and diversity, equity, and inclusion, which are all just lefty buzzwords. And they're concepts introduced within the last 10 years. So these are new things, and if you go against that, well, now all of a sudden, now you're the real racist. I mean, it's, it's funny because, you know, I feel like 15 years ago, this would have been big news. This would have been a big deal. This would have been all over the, you know, the nightly news, and people would have seen Tom Brokaw. You know, if he, I don't even know if he was still on back then. Um, you know, and he would have said, the state of Florida has been blacklisted by the NAACP, and this is very troublesome. Uh, Florida's regressing back into the segregation era. And... I think a lot of people would have seen that on the news and they would have taken it seriously and they would have said, oh my gosh, what's happening to Florida? This is so terrible. The NAACP, which we all know is very good and would never, you know, take such drastic actions, you know, to score cheap political points there, you know, and, and this would have been a, an actual scandal. But these days, everyone knows that racism is a fake word. It doesn't mean anything. And so it just lands with a, with a, thud, I guess you'd say. I mean, it's pretty dull. I mean, I only, I didn't see it, you know, all over the news. I just happened to catch it scrolling through Twitter. Now, the, uh, the next thing uh, is about felons voting. They say it's too hard for felons to vote because apparently felons, if they're incurred any like fines or something uh, related to their crimes, they have to pay off their fines first. And they say, well, you know, if you're a felon, you get out of prison and, you know, you don't have a job, you can't pay off the fine. And so you won't be able to vote until you pay off the fine. And it's like, okay, I mean, don't in a lot of states felons not vote at all? So, I mean, I, I think that was pretty recently that we legalized the felons voting thing. That was just a couple cycles ago that we made it so that felons can ever get their voting rights back. Now, personally, I think they should get their right to bear arms back before their voting rights. You don't have a constitutional right to vote, but you do have a constitutional right to, uh, to arm yourself. But anyway, it's neither here nor there. However, the last point made by the, or that I'm going over from the NAACP, this is my favorite one. And it does have to do with the right to bear arms. The NAACP is advising black people to stay out of Florida because we passed constitutional carry. And now you can, you can carry a gun without a concealed permit. Oh my gosh, the poor, think of the black people. 
How will black people ever recover from being able to carry a gun without a permit? It's not like, you know, black people, um, you know, get charged with carrying a gun without a permit more than any, than any other ethnic or racial group in the country. I don't even know the statistic, but I guarantee you that's the case. But the NAACP sees this as a bad thing for black people. They see this as dangerous. Oh, no, 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 don't go to Florida because you might be able to carry a gun without getting arrested. You might not get beat up by the police for carrying a gun. You might not get shot. And so um, it's uh, – when I saw that, that was what made me want to talk about this today. Just even though I'm not going to spend any time on it because, I mean, wh what is there to say about it? I mean it's, it's absurd on its face. So it seems like Florida these days is just you – know, we're, we're just all of a sudden hostile to all racial groups. Uh, all non-white groups, even though, you know, Florida, you know, in terms of if you want to talk about this quote-unquote diversity, Florida is and has been um, more diverse than the rest of the country for a very long time. But apparently now all the blacks and all the Latinos, they're just going to flee. I don't, I don't really get why, <laughs> but uh, but that that's the thing. I guess it's because they're left-wingers and they don't want to be here. So if you're a left-wing black person or left-wing um person who speaks Spanish or Portuguese, which, or descended from those people, by the way, that is, that is the, the actual definition of a, uh, Hispanic or Latino in, under U.S. law. It means that you are of descent of someone from a country that spoke either Spanish or Portuguese. So if you're from, um, Brazil, you're Hispanic. If you're from Mexico, you're Hispanic. If you're from, uh, uh, Portugal, you're Hispanic. You're from Spain, you're Hispanic. It's a category that doesn't really mean much. I mean, it, it encompasses a massive um, portion of the globe. It would be like if we had a racial group for Germanics. It's like, yeah, all, all of you people who have uh, German or Swedish or Norwegian last names or Danish last names, um, we're just going to make you all a racial group and we're going to set up all these all these um, uh, influence organizations, these lobbies uh, that are dedicated to, you know, your common Germanic causes. I mean, it's just absurd. So anyway, with that said, I will see you folks back here tomorrow.